please welcome to the stage the technical director for Out of the Sandbox, Ann Thomas. You don't have to call. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Um, so, yes, I am the technical director for Out of the Sandbox. Uh, so, every day, all day, themes, themes all the time. And I don't know about anyone else, but after all the announcements this morning, I kind of just want to have like a fireside chat about sections anywhere, everywhere. Anyone else? Like just, but no, I'll go on with my talk. So what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, strategies for building the best themes for clients. Uh, so it's sort of a high level overview of uh, strategies that you can implement. So strategy number one is kind of a, a little bit of a no brainer, but it's knowing your client. And what I mean by that is being able to identify the key features that your client requires, but also identify things that go beyond and deliver something that they didn't even know that they needed. So are you really listening? Your client does know their customer more than you probably do, generally, if you're an agency or if you're building the theme for them, and they really know their product inside and out. So take a note of all the requirements, requirements that they have, and also make note of any of the sites that they're bringing to you for examples, for functionality, that kind of thing. And also make sure to ask them, do they like, is it the design, is it the header, is it the footer? It's probably not the footer, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> but all the things that really stand out to them. And then, um, from there, so these are what I like to call the visible needs. So if you think about it like an iceberg, you have the visible needs, right? The beautiful iceberg floating there. So these are oftentimes the most obvious features of e-commerce. So things that they usually know that they want to display their products to full advantage. So things like, oh, I want an Instagram feed or featured collection on the homepage. Whether they want to have a blog, really invest time in that, or no blog at all. Um, product gallery on the product page, reviews, that sort of thing. So do yourself a favor, I would say, all of these visible needs that you know are fairly standard, clients generally ask for them all the time, know that you have a really straightforward, easy way of implementing them. So you can either have that in your, if you have code available, there's, uh, Shopify actually has a really great liquid library um, that you can use. So take note of all of these things that you can sort of implement over and over and over with these visible needs. So then we have the invisible needs. And these are often things that clients really don't know they even wanted in their theme, but you're there to actually give them to them. So some really important things like this are performance enhancements for the actual theme itself. So things like responsive images, again, kind of a no-brainer. DNS prefetch, what about avoiding too many liquid loops? All of the stuff that's happening on the quote-unquote back end that the client isn't really thinking about, but you know is gonna de deliver a better experience for their customers. Also, make sure that it's easy for your client to be editing their content. So leveraging all of the sections, <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, but also making sure that you're not hard coding text in your themes. I've seen this happen before. So make sure that it's gonna be easy to translate. Uh, also, consider design suggestions, offer up opinions that they may not bring to you. For example, um, we, uh, on one of our themes, uh, we had the option of implementing a little lock icon beside the add to cart. Just a really small thing. And it wasn't something that we were hearing feedback from um, merchants specifically, but we were like, oh, this could be really handy. And it does actually increase the perceived security and increases conversions. So things like that, you can really add a lot of value. Another thing uh, is very invisible to clients is the code itself. So clients don't generally care what's happening behind the scenes, but for any future developers that are gonna be working on this theme, yourself or others, think about how your code is actually structured, think about if it is scalable, think about all of these things. Is it organized, is it commented? That's definitely an invisible need. Make sure that it is readable. Oftentimes in development, <laughs> it's better to be readable than it is to be clever. Don't be clever, because if you're clever, you have to be just as clever as that point in the future. So just make it readable. All right, so strategy number two is considering their budget. So what theme actually works for your client and their budget right now? Right now. Well, what about five to 10 years from now? What's that situation like? Are you gonna be able to grow with them and this theme? Advise your clients to stick to e-commerce best practices. Try not to get carried away with too many competitor sites. If they're a small boutique type of client, 
you really don't want to be putting all the bells and whistles of Amazon and this kind of thing. They may want all that, but is that really something that they need? And especially when they're first starting out. So in the same way, when they are first starting out, it could be really dependent on their budget. So this is where we talk about custom or pre-built, okay? So custom is something that's very like bespoke design, functionality, built from the ground up with your client's needs specifically in mind right from the get-go. So this usually requires regular updates as well to keep up with the Shopify future releases, as we have learned today, <laughs> that there's always new things coming down the pipe. So this generally, not always, but would generally require a dedicated development team to keep up with these uh, new advancements. Uh, it's very customized to the client, uh, usually Shopify Plus, but not always, and it costs more money. So um, generally, like a high-end brand could definitely go with custom. Uh, there's all sorts of, custom is, is fantastic. Then there's also pre-built, um, which is less control over the design. Um, there's support from theme developers, so any uh, themes that are purchased off of the um, theme store, they do require any new uh, advancements that Shopify releases, always have to be updated uh, on the, the themes, free updates. Uh, there's faster turnaround time, and there's, it's a great option for uh, clients, especially if you're tweaking things, sort of built off a pre-existing theme. Um, so it's, uh, and they range in price from free to uh, more money. So then strategy number three is giving them uh, freedom. So oftentimes, unless they have an in-house development team or a content-specific team that's updating the content, the merchant themselves is going to be the one that's updating their theme, right? They're the one that it might be going around, sort of looking in, uh, poking around in the theme editor. So really take a page out of Shopify's book and make sure that you're creating friendly settings that make sense, that they know if they're changing settings in certain places, what that's actually going to affect in the theme. So how are they actually updating this content as well? Uh, the I had mentioned some things in here about like sections and blocks and this kind of thing, but that all go is now blown out of the water. <laughs> but sections is definitely something that um, sections everywhere is going to be so incredible uh, on every single page and can definitely be uh, leveraged to the full extent. Think about how you could create a frequently asked questions page for your client that's really easy for them to update. Think about how you could create a lookbook for every different season that they could have on uh, custom page templates, uh, the banners that they could have across the different uh, areas. So it's sections are the key. Um, landing pages is also a really good one as well. This is one that uh, also can be run into, which is too much freedom. <laughs> um, this is som somewhat controversial, but occasionally you may have a client that fancies themselves as a developer, and <laughs> in settings at least, and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna just gonna change some colors, do some things, and especially if you're tweaking a pre-built theme, for example, you may have a huge amount of settings that are available, but you don't necessarily maybe want your client to have access to all of those. So what you can do is you can actually just comment them out in the JSON, and they'll still be saved in the uh, settings data JSON file, um, but they won't be visible in the theme editor. So handy little tip. Um, so strategy number four is keeping your build in check. So. This is uh, never building your uh, theme through, or never building or tweaking your theme through the admin uh, editor. Always make sure that you're editing local. Uh, make sure that you are using Slate or Theme Kit, uh, Theme Gem if you want to be old school, um, and make sure that you always have uh, you're uploading your edited files to uh, development store. So the benefits of this are twofold: version control and you always have a backup if your clients decide that they want to go a little rogue and edit some things in the mid, you've always got something saved. So documentation for development, I mean, uh, this we could go on and on and on for this, but it is so, so important. If you aren't using some form of version control when you're building your themes, please start today. Uh, it is incredibly important to make sure that you have the ability to create uh, different branches, different versions to try things out for your client. Um, so personally, uh, in terms of build processes, I like using um, ThemeKit and Gulp. We have a custom one. Um, but if you're not using, you don't even have to use uh, a build tool at all. Just have something that uh, you can know that you can have um, an ability to upload really easily to work with for your clients. Uh, so with that, um, keep in mind, I mentioned this before, but think about the person that's going to be working on the theme next, right? This is your, whether it's your future self or another developer, when you're sort of having that handoff, 
um, make sure that they understand how, if you do have a build tool, for example, if you're using uh, Gulp or Grunt um, or Webpack, make sure that they understand how to actually update the theme. If you're just handing over to them like a fully like minified code and they have no idea how to actually like use that, that's really not a great experience for them and you're not sort of making sure that that theme is gonna live long. So um, make sure that you've got that uh, sorted out. Also, in terms of, that's for handing it over to another developer, but think about what if you're actually working with your client in terms of how you're handing off, how they're working in the theme editor. Do they understand how to use the theme editor? Do they understand how different settings work? Video documentation, uh, PDFs, anything like that that you can hand off is um, very helpful. So, look to the future. You wanna be able to build a relationship with this client and think about how their store is going to grow with their theme. What are the needs that they're gonna have uh, in the future? What are the new features that you can introduce that Shopify is sort of showing the world? For example, predictive search um, or something like recommended products. These are all things that are sort of coming down the pipeline that we're hearing about that can be implemented into your themes that can be really great for your client. And then this is also, who is actually maintaining this theme over the long haul? Are updates being made to the theme? There really is no sort of set it and forget it, hand things over. Um, there's always, as we know, web development changes very, very quickly, right? And so if you sort of <laughs> decide that, well, it's fine, we don't need to ever update or anything like that, things are gonna get um, out of date. You might be using sort of old third-party libraries that could break. You really just wanna make sure that you are maintaining this theme for your client uh, over the long haul. It's gonna be uh, better for you and for them. So, uh, the oh yeah, I already touched on the, the video or the written guides. So those are the five strategies that um, I thought were worth mentioning when you're building uh, themes for clients, particularly with the uh, emphasis being on making sure that when you're passing things over to your client that they have an understanding of how the theme was actually built. That's the, the biggest one that I want to make sure everyone understands. And then also the takeaway is really just the themes are worth uh, investing in because they really are the customer when they come to your client site. It's the very first impression, right? So you want to really make sure that it's a good one. Um, th so this was more of a high level overview of best practices that uh, I've learned. But if anyone wants to talk uh, in detail in terms of um, development processes, that kind of thing, um, I'd be more than happy to talk to you uh, outside. So that is it for me. Thank you so much everyone for listening. <laughs> Like Kurt came back like dirt rose. She always gets